Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is my BOM makeup challenge video. Um, BOM, the acronym stands for Black Owned Makeup Brands. I do have my sliding door open to my patio here because it is very hot as usual in the city in the summer and I don't have air conditioning. So I am sorry if that curtain is distracting. It's just, I need it open. This challenge was started a little more than a year and a half ago by Alyssa Forever and Alyssa Ashley. I will have their videos linked below. The purpose of this challenge was to help shine some light on some maybe lesser known minority owned brands. All AdSense revenue from this video will be donated to a black charity that's local here to me called United Roots that's in Oakland. United Roots is the convergence of five East Bay organizations that envisioned a youth-led movement harnessing arts and media to promote unity and peace in Oakland neighborhoods struggling with violence. Over 200 low-income students are served annually by United Roots Innovative Programming. United Roots' mission is to engage and empower marginalized youth in socially innovative ways through arts and media training, career and workforce development, community engagement, and wellness services. Just as proof of that, I will be um, showing my AdSense earning on my Instagram as well as a picture of my donation as proof, of course, with my details blurred out. As always, guys, I will be leaving timestamps below if you care to skip ahead to any certain area because I will be demoing these products, obviously, um, in this look, but I'm also going to give some information on the owners. I'm also going to be talking about why it's important for everybody, not just minorities, to support MBEs, which are minority business enterprises, as well as WBEs, which are women business enterprises as well, which um, most of these brands, I believe, except for one, which is AJ, who is a man, the rest are all women owned. I also want to speak to you guys um, from a manufacturer's standpoint to explain why so many brands I think are lacking in their shade ranges. I've also had these products for um, most of them for a long time and I've been meaning to do this video since I have limited time to film with my work schedule. I typically was cranking out the videos that were more time sensitive for like certain launches. I should have done this sooner, but um, I also want to talk to you guys at the end regarding some recent things that have been going on in our online beauty community and why I chose right now to do this video. Okay, so first what I want to do with you guys is explain why so many brands are lacking in their shade offerings. And again, this is by no means to say that it's acceptable because it does suck. I just want to explain to some people that might feel bad um, that they're being left out because the brands just don't care. Most of you guys know I work in beauty product manufacturing and so I work closely with manufacturers and distributors. So I have a um, slightly different view on this opposed to a lot of people that make videos. An example of a manufacturer and a distributor, some a brand like NARS makeup would be a manufacturer and Sephora would be a distributor. Now, I don't work with NARS, I'm just using them as an example. Black population in the US makes up roughly 13% of our population. Now, if you factor half of that half of that population for children, men, and women that choose not to wear makeup, you're left with roughly six and a half percent. That's six and a half percent of our population in need of deeper shades. As a manufacturer, distributors, someone like Sephora, only gives you a certain amount of shelf space in their store. And the way they break that down is every inch on their shelf has to be making a certain amount dollar-wise or it's kicked out because their stores only have limited space. And typically when something new comes in, something else has to leave to make room for that. So companies are constantly vying for that shelf space. I went on to Sephora.com and counted how many manufacturers or brands that are on their site right now that offer either foundations or even BB creams, and there are 43. Say out of those 43 manufacturers, each brand has maybe like a luminous foundation or a matte foundation or a powder foundation or a stick foundation, all of these different finishes, right? Now say all 43 of these brands come out with 52 shades in all of their different lines. Not everybody in that six and a half percent population that's in need of those deeper shades is going to buy from the same brand. So if you divide that up amongst the other 43 manufacturers, even if there was shelf space in stores for all of the colors, there's gonna be brands that are losing out on money because those shades just won't sell. And it's not just deeper skin that's cut out of the equation, it's also those that are extremely fair too. And that's because brands normally cater to the middle majority where the most people are. It's pretty much only for a financial reason that they do that. It sucks and I wish there was a better answer. Something that would be awesome is if every brand in retail stores 
had a machine that automatically custom blended everybody's perfect foundation and then maybe just the pros could buy direct to have every single shade or maybe they'll buy every other shade so they can mix like the lighter and darker and get the middle shade um, for pros that are doing makeup professionally obviously. I have noticed that a lot of brands are getting much better um, and offering more shades which I think is awesome. It totally sucks and I hope more brands will consider things like even just getting a tester of some deeper shades and maybe making them if they don't have the shelf space in the store for them that they can custom order or leave some in the back. Same thing for some lighter shades. Everybody deserves to feel beautiful and be included. Now real quick before we get into the makeup look, let me just explain why it's important for everybody to support um, minority owned businesses. It's not based on charity. You need to dramatically increase investment in minority entrepreneurs is vital to the survival of the U.S. economy. Understanding and supporting the needs of minority entrepreneurs is not just a moral imperative, it has become an economic one as well. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, by the year 2060, the minority population will become the majority. In 2015, the minority population came in at 38%. By 2060, it's forecasted to go up to 56%. This growth coupled with the factor that minority businesses have grown by over 50% over the last decade means that that group is going to be a driving force in the U.S. economy. Business policies and investments need to be much more diverse going forward to really make sure that our economy keeps growing and that the U.S. remains a leader. Attention must be placed on the growth and sustainability of a younger multiracial entrepreneur society as we move forward. The U.S. is going to remain a player in the global economy. According to the National Minority Supplier Development Council, minority businesses produce more than $400 billion in annual revenue and actively employ employee either directly or indirectly more than 2.2 million people. Additionally, minority-owned business contribute close to $49 billion in local, state, and federal tax revenues. This translates to the contribution of over $1 billion per day in revenue to the U.S. These business owners have the potential to create additional jobs in our economy, and it also helps when you support a minority-owned business. It helps support their families and their communities and the nation as a whole, especially in a time like this where unemployment among minorities is at an all-time high. You guys didn't know in undergrad, I was art history and economics major. They both sound boring but they were quite interesting. Now that we've got the econ lesson out of the way let's jump in if you guys are interested and in how I got this look and then at the end of this I'll I'll talk about some other things. Okay so currently um, I washed my face and I have my skincare done. Now I'm just going to go in with AJ Crimson's foundation. He makes some excellent base products and I'm also going to be using a Juvia's Place brush. I'm using the shade 1.5. I ordered it online, but it, it matches pretty well. It's a touch too dark, but I can blend it in. A little background on AJ. He's a celebrity makeup artist. It's been nationally published. And now he has his own makeup line. You can find his products on his site, on Friends, Camera Ready Cosmetics, Amy's, and Nigel's Emporium. I mean, look at that coverage. It's, it's pretty nice. I don't know if you can tell. And these were the brushes that Juvia's Place came out in collaboration with Aloe. They're really nice. I really like, I have some more uh, brushes that I'll show you. Um, they're really well made and they don't shed on me. Juvia's Place, I've reviewed before on my channel. I'll link those videos below of the first three eyeshadow palettes I bought. I've since bought the fourth. I haven't got the fifth one yet. I heard that one has a different formula, but again, I haven't tried it yet. The owner is Chichi Buru, I believe is how you say her name. She is Nigeria born and she is a wife and mother of two. This foundation is really um, luminous too, and it kind of really just melts into the skin. Now for brows, I got this Plain Jean Beauty, which is um, an organic, natural, um, non-toxic, safe brow pencil and taupe. The owner of this company, her name is Lake Lewis. She is a Stanford University graduate uh, with a master's in education, and she's also a certified makeup artist. And all her products are safe, organic, non-toxic. I will link her site below. Now I'm gonna take some of this Beauty Bakery. This is their uh, brown brownies. Oh, it does say eyebrow gel. Okay, cool, because that's what I'm using it for. <laughs> I thought it was uh, gel eyeliner. And I'm going to take um, the Juvia's Place. This is part of that purple set they have. I think they call it fuchsia on there. This is a Juvia's Place J129 angled brow brush. Beauty Bakery is owned by Cashmere Nicole. I will link that site below. I reviewed their, um, their lip whips on my channel. I don't know, almost maybe like two years ago now. Cashmere is a single 
mother and a breast cancer survivor, and she just recently opened up her first brick and mortar store in San Diego, which is really cool, so congrats to her. So I'm gonna touch it in here, and I'm just gonna put a little in the cap so I don't go too hard heavy in. You guys all been experiencing a heat wave? I see Caroline, she, looks, she said she's been really hot. I know my friends down in LA are really hot. Arizona is insane. Um, we're really warm here too. I'm just gonna use a disposable no-name spoolie because I wasn't able to find one. Next, I bought this um, by Black China. This is the Lashed Eyebrow Gel Set. I'm sure you guys all know who Black China is. Um, she is a model and entrepreneur. In May 2013, she graduated from JLS Professional Makeup School, and then in December of that year, she opened up Lash. She is also a mother of two. Now I'm going to prep my eyes, and for that, I'm going to use the Beauty Bakery Pancake Ice Cream. This is really good, I like this. This is like a better version of Max Painterly, I think. And for that, I'm going to use one of the Aloe's, um, Juvie's Place Aloe makeup brushes in there. Um, it's just a fluffier brush, and I'm just gonna prep my eyelids. This is meant as a cream shadow, it says, but I just use it as a base and I'll set it after. Since it is um, pretty emollient because it's meant to be a cream eyeshadow, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Beauty Bakeries. This is their translucent set. This is so cute. Look at the bag it comes in. Everything is, because it's called Beauty Bakery, it all kind of looks like um, pastry and bakery things. It's really cute. So I'm just gonna use a Julius Place brush and I'm gonna set that so my shadows can glide over top. There are so many excellent products that I have that are black owned. Um, I love the Juvia's Place. I, I've done reviews on them. Um, I love the colored rain shadows. Beauty Bakery has some awesome shadows. Um, so it was really hard for me to choose what I wanted to do because I just always wanna put it all on my face. And I was thinking maybe I'd do like one eye, one way and kind of like invert the colors on the other eye, but um, I've been dying to play with one pigment in particular, and that's the Pat McGrath Ultraviolet. So I'm gonna use some other shadows, and then I'm going to put that on top. First I'm gonna take um, out of the Colored Rain. Colored Rain is owned by Lorraine Roberts Dowdy, I believe is how you say her name. Um, I wasn't able to find a whole lot about her, um, but I will show her picture here. So I'm gonna pick up um, some of this Royal Prerogative on this Juvia's Place brush. This is the J125, and I'm gonna lay this down as to start working as a transition. I love this palette, you guys. I had this in my year in favorites. A bunch of the products I'm actually gonna be using in this I had in my year in favorites, like the colored rain shadows. Again, it's important for me with my hooded eyes to so always make sure I put my eye down at rest too. This eye look I saw, um, Pat McGrath actually retweeted it. It was an artist, um, so I'm gonna link it below. Obviously mine's not gonna look like that and I'm using different products, but I really liked the look. In my colored rain book, I'm gonna take um, this one. This is called Moments. Kind of like a little bit of a reddy brown. And I'm gonna go a little below where I just put that. I want it to have a little bit of a, a red color here. This is a smudge eye coal from Pat McGrath. I reviewed her highlight kits before. Pat McGrath is a world-renowned British makeup artist. Um, she's mostly known for her editorial and runway work. Um, she does beautiful makeup. I'm going to take a little bit of the tip of from the tip of this on my Juvia's Place is another brush um, in collaboration with Aloe, and I'm going to pack this all over my lid. Much as I was thinking of doing something colorful, I haven't done something smoky in a while. I've been wearing pretty neutral makeup lately. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's just a base and we'll blend it out a little more. This is the Pat McGrath brush that came in the kit and I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth and smoke it out. Now again, that's a cream and this is a fluffy brush so it should bring it up a little. We're gonna go back in with a darker color in a minute and try to help blend those two lines. I'm gonna t go back into my colored rain shadows and I'm gonna pick up this chocolate color right here on that same brush and I'm just gonna go back over where those two lines meet to kind of deepen it up but help blend it a little. It's gonna look probably crazy for a little bit until I finish it up. So I'm gonna take that big uh, fluffy brush and I'm just gonna kind of go over these lines, kind of try to make sure that they're all blended. 
Now I'm gonna wipe off, I have a towel on my lap. I'm gonna wipe off that flat shader brush I used to put the black on. And I'm gonna go into this. This kind of looks like Max uh, brown, blue brown pigment, but it's pressed. And this is uh, Colored Rain's Intergalactic. I love this color because it has a beautiful shift to it. And I'm going to pack that all over my lid, over the black. I'm going to pick up this J127 and that's from Juvia's Place with a little bit of that intergalactic and I'm going to try, normally I don't put shimmers up in my crease but I want to make sure that this has a little bit of that reflective property on that darker color so you can see it when my eyes open. Reddish brown color moments and I'm going to go back up over this so you can see it again my eyes open now this is the color i've been dying you guys know now like blue purple is my favorite color this is pat mcgrath's ultraviolet blue pigment i'm going to pick that up on the same flat shader brush that i was using and i'm going to pack this all over my lid as well that brush off i'm going to take um another color that came in those kits this is the uh astral astral this is the Astral White Pigment. I think that's on Astral. It's a little grainy. Pick that up. I'm going to just place that all over the whole lid. You can see all the pigments mixing together. I think it's kind of cool. I'm going to take a bit of this Black Moon um, on this pencil brush by Juvia's Place. And I'm just going to put it on the outside V right here and blend that. Take a smaller fluffy brush that same J127 and then just blend that. And a little fallout from the pigments which is normal so that's why I didn't want to do my under eyes yet. I'm just going to take a towel and clean up underneath my eyes where some of that pigment fell gonna work on my under eyes in a minute but I'm gonna take some more of that AJ Crimson foundation and I'm gonna pick it up on the same brush I used to blend in my eye base and just pick that up under here and then conceal under my eyes you guys know I haven't been using a lighter concealer anymore underneath my eyes since this is a really creamy um, and luminous I call this luminous I do find that um, where I normally don't set I do have to set take some more of that translucent powder and this is another brush um, from Juvia's Place and the Makeup by Aloe set. It was a really nice set and I'm going to put that underneath my eyes. They have a really pretty pink one too that can be used as brightening that I like too if you're um, cool toned and this one shouldn't add any color. Just use the leftover too. I clean the black off of that pencil brush. I'm gonna pick up that moments color that I put up top here, this like reddish brown, and I'm going to smoke this out underneath my eye. Take a smaller fluffy brush again. This is at Juvie's Place 127. I don't think they sell these individually. I think it's just a one like five piece kit. I'm gonna take a little bit of that black pencil on the angled brush that I used on my eyebrows, and I'm gonna draw that right around the waterline. Smudge it down a little. Go back in with some of that intergalactic and kind of stamp that on the black. Now I'm going to go back into that ultraviolet pigment. I'm going to pick up that white pigment again that came in the kit on this Juvia's Place 127 brush and I'm just going to fit that in that inner corner for that highlight. You know what? I don't like how... I feel like I darkened, put that way too dark, so I'm gonna go back in with that brush that I did my concealer and base with and just lighten that a little bit. There we go. Now go in with that pigment. There we go. Brow bone highlight, I'm gonna use Crown out of this um, Queen of Hearts palette. Ooh, that's frosty. smoky grungy I don't know what 
For lashes, I bought these um, Lash by Black China in the style Ice. I'm not sure if Juvia's Place has this anymore, but this is their lash adhesive I'm going to use. Just measure these up with my eye. I'm a little bit off the end here. Give the glue a shake. You know, I was going to get some Black Radiance. Um, I, first of all, I couldn't find any at the store freaking anywhere near me. Uh, the stores are so small, so they only keep like a few of each product from any line there, but there was none near me. And I don't have a, um, a Walmart anywhere near me. The closest one is across the bay. But then I was reading that they're actually not black owned. I don't know if that's true. I'll link some articles below on all that stuff. So I'm just gonna use a random mascara. I'm actually gonna use an eyeshadow to bronze up a little bit. This is Gingerbread by Colored Rain, and I'm gonna take that on my Pat McGrath. This is um, one of her brushes that was sold with the highlighting kits. I'm just gonna dip into this a little, and since I am light, I don't wanna go crazy with contour. I don't wanna go crazy with the bronzer. So just a little bit to warm up my face. For a blush, I'm gonna use the same brush, and I'm gonna use this princess color um, out of the Queen of Hearts palette by Colored Rain. I love these kind of neutral, light, plummy, mauve blushes. Now I'm gonna take um, the shimmery side of the Pat McGrath highlighter. I'm gonna put a little of that on my finger. And I'm gonna tap that on the top of my cheekbones. I'm gonna kind of layer up my highlight here. To highlight, I'm gonna use that same brush and I'm gonna pick up this selfie. This is one of the Colored Rain highlighters. I really like these. I thought that this would be too dark for me, but it's actually not. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see. I'm gonna take the neutral set one more time and this big powder brush um, by Juvia's Place from the Aloe set. I'm gonna powder in my nose. Since it's so hot, I'm gonna go do my hair first and then I'll come back and do lips. I think for lips, I should go with um, like a nude. This is uh, Beauty Bakery's Lip Whip in Honey. I think I'm gonna put just a little bit of gloss over this and this is the Pat McGrath gloss that came in the lip kits. Um, so this is a completed look, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, um, now I'm not really sure how to broach this topic. I do a video I made about a little more than a year ago and some recent happenings. I'm getting a ton of questions and emails about what I think is going on. I'd like to discuss it with you guys now as it relates to race and I feel like this video is a good time for it. Right off the bat, if you don't care what I have to say, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Um, if you don't like drama, you might not want to watch this part. So at this point, if you're still here, I'm assuming that you're a cognitive adult that made an informed decision going forward to watch this, so no bitching in the comments later. Especially no bitching if you're a Jeffree Star fan because saying that you don't like drama because that man is walking drama and I'm sure you're the same people during the Two-Face drama that he injected himself into that was screaming, yes, drag him, Jeffree. So you seem to only not like the drama when it's directed at your idol. So if that's you, again, shoo, shoo, go away, children. People can talk about LGBT rights. They can talk about people of color's rights. We can talk about any issue without being one ourselves. I think the main important thing in that is that you're not talking over that community. Like, it's not my place to be morally outraged for someone else, but I can say, when I see a disgusting act, I can say I don't agree with that and I don't support it. I'm not gonna tell anybody else that they have to be mad, but I'm also not gonna tell that person that they have to forgive. I don't consider this drama what I wanna talk to you guys about. I consider this a conversation that sometimes makes people uncomfortable, but I think is important to kind of grow and heal and move forward. I'm not tagging him in my video nor putting him in my thumbnail. Um, so if you're here to watch this video, it's because you either sought me out or you're one of my viewers. And if you're one of my viewers, I think you guys know me over the past two and a half years and you get where I'm coming from. One last thing to get out of the way, if you're a commenter that says stick to makeup or something like that, perhaps you're as deep as a puddle and you can only talk about beauty products or your little pinhead would pop off, but that is not me. I'm always going to speak about things that are important to me. If you don't like that, you certainly don't have to watch me and you certainly certainly don't have to be subscribed. The beauty of doing this as my hobby is I don't have to pander to anybody. It's quite liberating. Last year I made a video um, 
unfortunately, I think it's one of my most viewed videos, which I would like to take it down uh, just because I don't want to be known or even put in the same sentence as him for things. But um, I think it's important to keep it out there as a record of what happened. At the end of my review on his products, I brought up some reprehensible behavior that I had found after purchasing his products when some people were DMing me and letting me know some issues that they had. And I found a plethora worth of information and incidents and some things that I didn't even put in my video because there was music playing in the background and I didn't want to get a copyright strike. The majority of those things and proof that I had linked in that video have been removed by his music management company, which I can't say I blame him because I wouldn't want those things floating around about myself if I now had a brand and I was attempting to sell things to the general public. I didn't make that video out of hate. Um, I really don't think I hate anybody in this world. I just don't have room for that in my heart. I was disgusted by his behavior. And while some of some of the viewers that watched that got so pissed off at it, it's like, so wait, he said some fucked up shit. Yet we should all feel bad for pointing it out. It's like, I don't even understand that. I made that video because I thought people had a right to know who we were supporting when we buy those cosmetics. Recently, that video has gotten a huge uptick in troll activities, according to my moderator, Ronnie. Uh, thank God for Ronnie. I don't have to read any of that sledge, but she'll call me and we check in and sometimes she'll be like, oh boy, things are getting crazy. I'm like, I don't wanna know. <laughs> Not because they hurt my feelings, but because I'd like to put my foot up everyone's ass. I'm assuming that that recent spike had to do with Jeffrey's video that he released last week to, entitled Racism. I'd like to frame a few things and maybe kind of explain how this may come full circle and why I'm talking about it now. Two months ago, Jackie Aina released an Auntie Hall video where she very politely and respectfully said that she wouldn't be supporting Jeffree Star Cosmetics because of the anti-black comments that he had made. And she even said in that video that she did not want to speak on anybody's character and that if there was an apology that she was unaware of it. Now keep in mind the apology that was out there was a few tweets that you literally would have had to search through like hours and hours and hours of Twitter. Or there was like some random snaps that expire after 24 hours that he mildly addressed it, but none, nothing too in depth. So all of the horrible evidence was very easy to find. So why would anybody spend days and days looking for an apology? I don't even know, when they're not the ones that were in the wrong to begin with. Anyway, she respectfully asked um, if he didn't feel that way, she would just like some clarification. After that video, um, Jackie was blocked on his Instagram. I don't know if someone tagged her in something and asked her to look, but she went to look, noticed she was blocked. She posted it on Twitter. And she posted it with a face of a girl rubbing her temples. And she was just like, ugh. Now, I took that to mean, are you serious? Like I asked you a question. If, if that wasn't the case, wouldn't you just explain to me or apologize? And here's the thing. If I say some fucked up shit and I hurt an entire group of people, you don't just say, I said sorry once and now it's over. I'm not that person anymore. You keep apologizing until they know that you're sorry. And it's up to them whether they wanna accept the apology or not. But I mean, at least you get it out there. You don't block people and then call them names because after that, Jeffrey went on one of his typical Twitter rants where he called her, a rat, he called her irrelevant, he brought up her taxes, he tried to like spill some details of her upcoming wedding that she hasn't even talked about. If any of that's true, I don't know. Um, just really hitting below the belt. A lot of people felt like the word rat, which I also felt like, was um, a racist just because um, he called me pathetic. You know, he went on and on about Kat Von D, called her pathetic and that she couldn't hold a man. But the only two women I've seen him verbally attack and call rats was Makeup by Shayla and Jackie Ina. And I'm sure most of you know the word hood rat is a racist term to describe a black woman. Whether that's what he meant to imply or not, um, I feel like since you're under the microscope for so many like very blatant things you've said outright, like on film, it's not up for debate whether you said those things or not. Um, you're, you do have to be a lot more careful with the things that you say. I just feel like if I was the one that said something really messed up and someone made a video very politely being like, it really hurt my feelings. It's like, why should she have to tiptoe contact him privately? Everything he said was very public. 
so he should make a very public apology. He had no problem making a whole video dedicated to Kat Von D and their dissolution of their friendship. And I can't help but feel like, do you notice that you're the common denominator in all of these problems, yet you're not the one here for drama? Come on now. And I'm gonna keep saying my opinion because I'm not God. This is just what I think, obviously. You're free to make up your own mind of what you think is acceptable and what's not. And believe it or not, even if we have a differing opinion, we can still be cordial or friends with each other. Now here's where I feel like some people went totally wrong, like Tati. So Tati did a collab video with Jeffrey um, literally the day after some of the stuff happened, which I'm sure obviously was pre-filmed, that was edited, and it just so happened to go up the day after all of this happened. And she got a shit storm of thumbs down on that video. Um, comments of not people being like, kill yourself, I hate you. The comments were, I thought, kind of constructive and just saying like, no, why are you doing this? I feel like it was a slap in the face to her civilized audience that that's not acceptable behavior. And just because in your head, in your heart, you say that you've changed, not everybody else knows that. And everybody is at a different point in learning these things, you know? So what may be old news for you might be brand new information to me. So to tell somebody, get over it, it doesn't work that way. Tati deleted all of the comments of concern um, and she pinned a comment first that said she would have rather have less people there that were supportive of her so she didn't care to lose the people that were leaving and whatever she lost from her original fans that have been with her forever she gained back from Jeffrey's audience but I don't think she didn't seem to really care that much and believe me Tati does not care what I say we don't know each other we don't speak um she clearly doesn't care what you guys say either according to her comment so I mean it's all good Tati then pinned another comment on her video that basically said that Jackie I know was to blame, that she instigated the situation, and how would any of us react if someone was being attacked on social media? I was just like, no. I, I don't even understand where that comes from. Jackie as a black woman sees videos circulating, not one, not two, not three, multiple ones of him chasing black women down the street, screaming obscenities, doing skits where they're supposed to be funny. So again, it wasn't just like one video 10 years ago or whatever it is, this aggressive behavior towards even just women in general, but women of color has continued some of it recently as a year ago and some of it now just a couple weeks ago. When you're the one that fucks up, you're in no place to tell everybody else, okay, I'm ready to move on from this now. I don't wanna talk about it anymore. Yeah, that must be nice. I'll tell them, as a kid, I could tell my parents, I don't want to be grounded anymore. I'm ready to move on from this. <laughs> no. And I will tell you that his, um, you know, super fans that are die hard, reading their comments in some of these people's videos is, I mean, hateful, racist, horrible comments. Some of them saying that because you don't agree with the things that he said that you're homophobic. I've seen some people say that, which again, that is just like, I'm hoping by just young kids that really don't understand the world. <laughs> just because you don't agree with someone's actions on a certain thing doesn't mean that you hate everything that they are. That just doesn't make any sense. Just reading their comments, I'm sure anybody would be proud to take ownership in them. <laughs> and I'm not saying everyone that watches his videos. I'm talking about the people that just go on blatantly attack. Like I saw some people attacking Jackie and it was just, I mean, insane. For me, typically genuine apologies come of your own accord, not when you're under pressure or someone's getting a ton of hate. Like in Tati's video, maybe it was at her urging that he say something because things are getting ugly really quick. The video only came after their collab. I mean, this stuff had been coming up um, prior to my video, but I think a lot of people um, mainstream got to see them kind of all compiled in one area and he never addressed it after that. I was just called names, pathetic, again, because wanting clarification of someone's horrible actions, yet everybody else is the bad guy, he's the victim. Someone asked me on my Instagram what I thought of um, the Tati and Jeffrey collab before his apology video came out and I replied, Later on, a drama video was made in which the title said that I called Tati gross. Well, what I said was Tati grossed me out for um, not listening and alienating a large portion of her viewers that just had concern. They weren't hate at all. And for her basically blaming Jackie for being upset that she was called a name. 
So I'm sorry, that does gross me out. I stand behind that statement and I don't take it back. I don't, she doesn't care, I don't care. I'm not here to dissect his apology. Do we all make mistakes? Of course, I've personally never used racial slurs, but I guess everybody is different. Can we all grow as people? Of course. I did see people questioning the timing, why now? Why after that one particular video that a bunch of heat was coming down. Um, I saw people say that he wasn't really taking ownership of what he did, that he was using excuses of his childhood. One thing I can tell you is I'm pretty sure probably it's a safe bet to say 99% of people that are sitting in prison have had horrible upbringings and abusers were probably once abused themselves. Uh, that does not absolve you from guilt or judgment, especially as an adult. And I don't think that because Jeffrey used some racial slurs that gives people of color to use homophobic slurs. Is that how this whole circle just keeps going and then everyone now can say, well, he said something mean, so now I can say something. It's like, when does it end? The good news is there is now like a very public apology on record and it's up to people of color to choose whether they accept it or not. Uh, I do see a bunch of white people being like, thank you, that took a lot of guts to address. It's like, mm, no, <laughs> I don't really think. The insults weren't directed at you, so I don't really know what you could forgive him for. I've heard some people say uh, the only white people that care about, actually several people, the only white people that care about what Jeffrey said are people that have white guilt or implying that these people um, are virtue signaling. First of all, don't use words you don't understand. And second, all decent human beings should care about the things that came out of his mouth. 10 years ago, a week ago, yesterday. I think most people were just looking to be like, hey, this is out there, is that the way you feel? And since he always goes on the offensive to attack people and block people, it's like, I don't think people really got an answer to that. Just because you don't experience something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Life extends beyond our own personal experiences. I remember when I first heard the term white privilege, I was like, I don't, I don't want that. I don't have that. And to me, white privilege sounded like white power. It sounded like a very racist, horrible thing. It sounded bad. Then the more I started thinking about it, I started thinking about it as an economic situation. But then I also thought about the fact that if you have some people of color and white people of the same, same financial status and you put them in the same situation, there is the white people are definitely always going to have some privilege over the people of color, like it or not. I mean, I think in general, if you just watch the news, white people don't have to worry as much as being killed by police officers for just driving down the street. Now, I'm not slamming police officers or anybody that serves our country. I very much appreciate the sacrifice that they make for our country, but it's undeniable that we have some issues in this country that are still going on and there are people being killed. And I don't think that that's the majority of people, but the fact that we're giving these people badges and weapons is very concerning to me. I had a hard time with a lot of concepts. I think because I don't think in those terms, it's very hard to understand that other people are treated poorly because of some people that are racist. A woman on my Instagram named Omayan oh said something about a year ago that really stuck with me. We were having this debate back and forth just on my Instagram. Everyone was kind of chiming in. Uh, at the time we were talking about police brutality. And she said, a lot of times people, if you don't identify as the victim, then you feel like you must be the aggressor in that situation. And she's completely right because I felt like if I'm not the one being racially profiled, then you feel like, I don't know, like a guilt, like you must be doing something wrong or I don't know. People definitely can feel hostile and like accusations are being swung around. You have one group of people that is, you know, really been hurt and then you, you do have some people on the other side that are innocent of those things and they feel like they're being accused of being bad guys so everybody gets up in arms and I think that it just is like constant clashing. My friend Sinead sent me this book called The Peculiar Institution. Her and I have had some good talks. Um, that's about slavery in the antebellum south. Um, it's an interesting read. It's quite horrific but um, good to give you some perspective. I've been reading lots of different publications, um, obviously watching and reading the news and just kind of taking in things from all sides. You know, some things I agree with and some things I won't, and that's okay. I'm far from a social justice warrior. Well, that name sounds like something good. I mean, who wouldn't like social justice? It's become a joke to label people that wanna constantly be offended by everything, find fault in everything. And I will say, I feel that a lot of times nowadays. I can't even post 
something about like sharks or something about anything without people being offended by something I have said. And unfortunately, that's just always going to be the way it is. We're all different people. We all think different. Intent has to count for more, though. I feel like um, the social justice warriors have done a lot of damage, mislabeling and jumping to conclusions on a lot of things. One small example is I lost my health care due to Obamacare. I had made a comment that I felt like the bill needed more reform. Obviously, I want everybody to have health insurance. What kind of monster would want sick people to die? I don't know. But I also care about my own well-being as well. And my insurance went up to right under $1,000 a month. Or on Obamacare, I could have got it for $457 a month with a $16,000 deductible. So I had made the comment that I think that the bill needed more reform. And I had several white girls call me racist. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's just absurd. You can disagree with some people's thoughts and not hate them because of the color of their skin. That doesn't make any sense. Just like you shouldn't hate anybody because of the color of their skin, you shouldn't automatically have to like anybody because they're white, because they're black, whatever it may be. When those girls called me racist, I reacted with the eye roll and in my head saying, not everything is about race. And then later I realized, you know, it's easy for me to say that because I haven't dealt with being judged by my race my whole life. Problem is though, is it's made people so dismissive about a lot of things. Like you can see some people in the comments saying, okay, they apologize, get over it. It's like, you can't shrug everything off as I'm tired of listening to it. I don't wanna hear it anymore, whether it be because you feel guilty or I don't know, or you feel bad and you don't wanna hear about it anymore because it's making you feel bad. If you write everything off as that though, you do a huge disservice to real issues that go on. Listen to the people in the communities that are affected, not the people that want moral superiority to be outraged on everyone else's behalf. You just have to use common sense and some human decency when you're deciding, you know, what, what cause to take up. Something that's important too is you can't accidentally be racist. It's a very deliberate thought. You can be accidentally ignorant Definitely. I'm ignorant to a lot of things. I don't know everything. I don't know anybody that does. By just maybe not knowing that something that you said might be taken offensively and then you can grow from that point. If you guys are watching this video, I assume that you're part of this online beauty community that we have here. Beauty definitely goes more than skin deep. A little kindness and understanding definitely goes a very long way. In closing to all of this for the questions that a lot of people have asked, I did update my description box on my Jeffree Star video with a link to his apology. I also pinned it in the comments so that way people can always have all sides of the story to make their mind up for themselves. I won't talk about it going forward as long as the apology stands. Believe it or not, I try not to be a gigantic bitch, but again, like I said, I'm always gonna talk about things that I feel like are important to talk about. Since I've gotten a ton of questions about it, I just thought that I would put this at the end of this video as it relates to race and um, helping support the minority community that we have here on YouTube and just everywhere in general. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.